Hey, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me today. If this is your first time, welcome. This week I'm picking up about $30 to $35 in groceries to make all of my dinners for the week. That's seven dinners plus one bonus dinner or lunch idea. I really hope that you love the recipes. Let's head to the store and get shopping. Here is my list today. I'm gonna try to stay under $30, so let's get shopping. First, I wanna go take a look at the chicken. So let's head on back there to the meat area. So these are $1.19 a pound for the chicken leg quarter. So I'm gonna find a package around $5 and grab one. Okay, so I found one for $4.37. So let's get that one. And I'll get some pizza dough here for $1.29. Okay, I'll get some cream cheese for $1.45. One container of cottage cheese for $2.45. Just get the full fat. A little bit more flavor, I think. Next, we'll get some milk. I'm gonna get a half gallon here for $1.89 of the 2% milk. And I like the prices here on the ground turkey and ground beef that come in a roll. So I believe I'm gonna get the ground turkey today for $2.65, although the 85% is a pretty good deal at $3.99 also. Next, I'll get a package here of broccoli florets for $1.09 and one bag of peas for 99 cents. And for anybody interested in organic, they do have great prices on organic veggies too. They're $1.59 for the corn and peas. They also have some organic mixed veg and cut green beans for $1.59. So really great deals too on organic products. Next, I'll get a bag of mixed veggies in the freezer section for 85 cents. So I was going to get some sour cream, but they're all out. That was $1.69, so instead, I'm gonna go ahead and just get some regular plain yogurt for $1.79 to substitute. All right, let's find one here. Next, we'll get some egg noodles for $1.54. Next, I'll get two boxes of penne pasta. And these are 98 cents each. And I'll get one container of Parmesan for $2.65. Let's see, they have two different kinds. They've got this grated Parmesan and they've got the Parmesan and Romano. We're just gonna get regular Parmesan. Then I'll get one container of pasta sauce here for $1.45. There we go. They have lots of different options. They've got marinara, they've got traditional, they've got mushroom. So whatever your heart desires, you can get. And they also have the meat flavored as well. So that's an option too. Let's just get traditional this time. Next, I'll get one can of tomato sauce for 43 cents. Mm -hmm. Then one can of tomato paste for 75 cents. And we'll get 16 ounces of mozzarella cheese for $3.95. Okay, scratch that. We're gonna get the not already shredded, just the block cheese for $3.79 instead. And it's a full pound as well. Since we have so much mozzarella cheese, I'm gonna just go ahead and get one more of these pizza doughs for $1.29 as well. I'm just gonna get one small potato for one recipe and they're $1.47 a pound, so I'm just gonna get a pretty small one. The onions are only 49 cents a pound, so we're just gonna get a few of those today. Here's everything that we are getting today. Today we're spending $34.59, so we did go a little bit over. The first thing I'm going to do when I get home from shopping is prepare the chicken. It doesn't take long, but it's going to save me a ton of time later in the week, and that way I can get a few things done right off the bat here. So first I'll just pat dry the chicken with a paper towel, then season with salt and pepper. This time I'm using an instant pot, but you can definitely do the oven method that I did last time. So you can check that out. I'll put a link in the description for you. Then after placing them in, I just put a little bit more salt and pepper on top and about a cup of water. This is just to make sure that it doesn't burn. Then I'm going to close that up and seal it and cook it on high pressure for 15 minutes. Then I'll allow that to natural release for 10 minutes. And then after that, I let it sort of rest for just a couple minutes after I let the steam out and everything. And then I'm going to go ahead and shred the chicken. Once I open it up, I do check that the chicken is 165 degrees Fahrenheit as well. And if it's not fully cooked, you can also just pressure cook it for a few more minutes to make sure it gets up to temp. Now, you can season these any way that you like. I just did salt and pepper because I had a lot of different dishes in mind for this one. So you can add all kinds of different seasonings, garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, whatever you love. 
really the sky's the limit. So just decide what you want to do and what kind of flavors you like and go ahead and do that. Now I'm just going to use my hands because it's easier to shred all of the meat off. And once that meat cools, I'm going to go ahead and separate it as well into three separate portions because I have three meals that I'd like to use the chicken for. I'm going to have two portions that are one cup and one portion that's half a cup. I'm also saving all the bones and skin and putting that in the freezer for later and saving the broth as well. I'm just going to put that in an airtight container, let that cool a bit, and then I'm going to refrigerate it because the following day I'm going to take that back out and you're going to see that there's some fat on top. I want to scrape that fat off and I'm actually going to be using the fat in place of butter. So instead of butter and not having anything on hand to cook with, we're going to go ahead and use chicken fat. And I'm going to tell you all about that and don't be afraid. I know it sounds a little bit different for some people and honestly this is my first time using chicken fat in this way and it turned out really well. I heard a lot about it before trying it. I promise it's delicious. So this first dish is sort of a play on stroganoff. I'm using ground turkey. I'm just going to go ahead and brown the ground turkey and just make sure with this ground turkey that you've thawed it in the refrigerator overnight so it thaws properly. It really makes a difference in the texture and I'm just going to be seasoning it with some salt, pepper, and garlic powder this time and again the seasonings really make a difference. So be sure to choose any seasonings that you love for whatever dish that you're making because again it's going to change the outcome of the dish if you don't season it properly. Then after that's browned a little bit, I'm going to add my onions. Now this is a stroganoff that I forgot to get the mushrooms, but that's okay. You can add mushrooms if you like. It really will elevate the dish and add some earthiness to it as well. So that's totally up to you. And some people don't like mushrooms. That's perfectly fine. So I just seasoned it again with some more salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Don't be shy with those seasonings. Make sure you add plenty. And then I set that aside in a bowl while I make the sauce. So I'm using some of that chicken fat here. I'm just using about three quarters of a tablespoon of chicken fat. Then I waited for that to melt and added my flour, stirred that in, then slowly added my chicken broth. And I wanna make sure that I cook out that flour flavor too. So I do let that just kind of cook for a few minutes until it gets a little bit more browned before moving on to the next step. And then I just slowly added my chicken broth. Now for the chicken broth, I just used about two teaspoons of the chicken drippings that I saved and then added the one and three quarters cups of water to make that chicken broth. So that's just how I'm going to be doing this entire time. Whenever I say chicken broth, I just mix those two together. Then after that, I added my tomato paste and some seasonings and stirred that on up, brought that to a simmer, and then added my ground turkey and onion mixture back in and gave that a good stir until everything was coated, and then added my yogurt. I'm using one cup of yogurt here, and you can either use plain yogurt, Greek yogurt, or the original plan was sour cream. That will work just fine. It's just going to really add a nice creaminess to the sauce. And meanwhile, I cooked some of those egg noodles on the side, put those in a bowl and then just placed all of this on top. It was super delicious. This next recipe is probably going to knock your socks off and you're never going to look at cottage cheese the same ever again. So first I started by softening some cream cheese in a large bowl and starting my pasta in a separate pot. Just let that boil as directed on the package. Once that cream cheese was softened, I took that out and just mashed it a little bit with a fork just to get the stirring process started and then added my cottage cheese, some dried parsley and Italian seasoning and gave that a really good mix. Now I'm just going to strain out that pasta and add it straight to this cheese mixture. Now don't make the mistake that I did using a small bowl. Make sure you get a really large bowl for this because it is a lot of pasta and it's going to require a lot of stirring here, but it does come together really quickly and everything gets nice and warm and melty. So it really doesn't take any time at all to get it all stirred up. Next, I'm going to grab a casserole dish and that jar of pasta sauce. I'm just gonna put a couple of spoonfuls of pasta sauce down on the bottom of the casserole dish, and that's just to keep things from sticking. And then I'm going to put down one layer of that pasta. Just gonna do half of the mixture right in there and just make sure that I push it around so it's spread evenly all the way across the bottom. Then I'm going to top that with half of the pasta sauce and about a third of the mozzarella cheese and some Parmesan cheese. This really makes a difference for the flavor, so don't skip that Parmesan. Then I'll add the next layer of the pasta. So now you can really see this is sort of a lasagna, a very fast and easy lasagna, and it's going to be just as cheesy and just as delicious. So after that pasta layer, I'm going to add the rest of the sauce and just make sure that it's coated evenly across the entire top of that pasta. 
put a little bit of Parmesan, then the remainder of that mozzarella cheese, and this is about two thirds of the mozzarella cheese here. You're just gonna put all of that on there and then top it with a good amount of Parmesan cheese. And this is just because when it bakes, it'll get a really nice crisp texture on the top. Now I'll cover it with foil and just make sure that foil does not touch the cheese at all, otherwise it will stick. And we're gonna put that in the oven for about 25 minutes, then remove the foil and cook for another 25 to 30 minutes or until that cheese is really nice and brown and melty and the pasta is bubbly. And that's it. You're just going to serve this. I had some fresh basil in the garden, so I put a little bit of that on top, but it's not necessary. You can add more Parmesan on top. You are not going to believe how cheesy this is, and it's so full of protein. It's really going to fill you up. It's a fantastic meal, so you've got to try this one. And if you do try this one, please let me know in the comments because I'm really excited to hear what you thought of it too. This next dish is using some cottage cheese as well. It's a cottage cheese penne alfredo, and we're going to be using about half a cup of cooked chicken for this one as well. Now in a blender, I just added some milk, cottage cheese, Parmesan, pepper, and garlic powder, and gave that a good blend until it was completely blended. We're looking for a really nice smooth texture here, and it's not necessary. You definitely don't need to blend it, but it just really gives it that Alfredo sauce feel. Next, I added some of that chicken fat and that chicken to a large pan, and my chicken was still pretty frozen. So just make sure you have yours thawed out before getting started. But if it's just a little bit frozen, that's okay. You can just heat it up in the pan like I did. Then once that's heated through, you're gonna add your sauce. If there's a little bit of Parmesan on the bottom that didn't get blended, that's totally fine. Just pour that all in there and then add some dried oregano and dried basil. Give that a good stir and just bring that to a simmer. Just make sure that you don't bring this to a boil because then that will break the sauce. And in the meantime, I'm cooking my pasta in a separate pot and then I strain that out. Once that was all cooked, I added it to the pasta sauce, gave that a really good stir and really that's it for this dish. It's really amazing. It tastes just like fettuccine alfredo, well penne alfredo with chicken and I really think that your family is going to absolutely love this one. This next dish is just a super easy pizza night but we're going to make our own pizza sauce. If you've never made pizza sauce, it's actually super easy. So it's just tomato sauce, tomato paste, some water, oregano, Italian seasoning, garlic powder, onion powder, black pepper, and salt, and just give that a good mix. And again, I don't know what the deal is, but I keep grabbing these small bowls. Make sure it's in a nice large bowl because you're going to need to mix it. And then make sure you grab your pizza dough out of the fridge just a few minutes before you're ready to work with it so it does get a little bit closer to a workable temperature. And then you're going to flour the surface. Usually just use your counter if it's smooth or you can use a cutting board. It doesn't make a difference either way. And if you weren't able to find pizza dough that's already made, it's actually pretty easy to make, just a few ingredients. So you could always try your hand at that if you like. And for this one, I like to just separate the large ball into three. So I just cut it in half and then cut the one half into two halves for my kids because they like having their own little personal pan pizza. And then I just rolled it out with a rolling pin and gave them theirs to sort of decorate with the cheese and the sauce and then did mine separately. And so first I'm just gonna start with the sauce and I like to bring it really close to the edge, but that's up to you how much crust that you like. And then add some mozzarella cheese as much as you like. And we do have a second dough ball too. So if you have more family members, you can make more. And I had some fresh tomatoes from the garden. So I grabbed those and added that. Now just make sure that you season this with salt, pepper, and then add some Parmesan cheese on top too. You can also put butter, water, or oil on the outside of the crust and that will keep the crust from burning. So this one is super easy and turns out really delicious. This next recipe is a chicken and veggie soup. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the bones and skin and some of the onion scraps that I saved from when we made the stroganoff. Just add that all into my really large stock pot. This is a six quart stock pot. Cover it with water and then let that simmer on low, partially covered for about two hours. You can do this like up to 12 hours or really as long as you'd like. But if I'm short on time, I'll do two hours and that's it. And then just strain all that broth out into another large pot. Just be careful and make sure that you do put another pot underneath so all that broth doesn't go down the drain. Then I took that stock pot and wiped it out and started on cooking all my veggies. So I used a little bit of the chicken fat and then sauteed my onions until they were nice and soft and translucent. Then I peeled and chopped that potato and added it in with the chicken, which is about a cup, and that whole bag of mixed veggies. Then I just topped that with the broth that we just made and then brought that to a boil. Then boiled it for about six minutes or so 
added some seasonings as well. And this time I'm just gonna be using Italian seasoning and some pepper, but you can use bay leaves, oregano, basil, thyme, all the things, and make sure you taste it, of course. And after six minutes, I'm going to add my egg noodles. So that way everything finishes cooking at the same time. The potatoes are usually done at about 12 minutes. And just make sure you season with salt before serving to make sure that it's the right amount of seasoning for you. Now this next one is a play on a chicken noodle casserole. So I'm gonna start by heating some of that chicken fat in a large pot and cooking my onions until they're nice and soft and translucent. And then I'm going to add a little bit of flour, whisk that until it's completely combined. And then I'm going to cook this flour mixture until it's nice and toasty brown, just to get that flour flavor out of there. So right now in this recipe, I'm actually just making a homemade cream of chicken soup. So if you ever need to make one, this is exactly how you make it. And you don't have to use the canned stuff anymore. It's actually super easy and it doesn't take much time at all. It doesn't really add a whole lot of time to your recipe. Next, I'm going to add my chicken broth. And again, it's just some of those chicken drippings with water all stirred together. And I'm gonna add it very, very slowly, whisking as I go, just to make sure I avoid the lumps. And I'll alternate with milk as well. Start stirring in that milk a little bit at a time until everything is nice and combined. This is the most important step because you really don't want lumps of flour in the base here. After the liquid is all stirred in, I'm going to season with some garlic powder and onion powder and some salt and pepper. Give that a stir and I'm gonna bring this to a simmer. Now I let that simmer for about three to four minutes until it was slightly thickened. And then I added my yogurt and my chicken and mixed it all together. At this point, you could also add your peas what I did though is I cooked my egg noodles separately and then just added the peas about two minutes before my noodles were completely done cooking. So that way it just sort of quickly blanched the peas and they were almost already all cooked through by the time I put them into the sauce. Then I gave that a good stir and just continued cooking for a couple more minutes till the peas and noodles were all the way cooked through, then tasted it and seasoned with a little bit more salt, pepper, and additional seasonings. And now I did go ahead and add a little bit of Parmesan on top and broiled it for a couple minutes to get a nice crispy crust on top. That's totally optional. You really don't have to do that. That doesn't make the dish, so it's really just up to you. Or if you have some breadcrumbs, you can toast those in some melted butter, add those on top to get a crispy crust, or even just some crushed up Ritz crackers would do the trick too if you want some sort of topping on top. And that's it. And then just serve it up and enjoy this one. Next, I'm going to make just a very simple broccoli cheese soup. I'm just going to start by heating up some oil, or if you have any chicken fat left over, or if you just want to use water, you can do that. And just saute my onions until they're nice and soft and translucent. Then I'll add some of that chicken broth. And again, that's just drippings and water mixed together. Then I'll add some milk and the remaining cottage cheese I have on hand, which is about a half a cup of cottage cheese. I'm going to give that a stir and bring that to a simmer and season that with salt, pepper, garlic powder. And again, add all the seasonings, whatever you normally like in soup, add it now. Once it's simmering, I'm going to add my broccoli, which I chopped up a little bit just to make it more bite-sized. Now, I do recommend if you want a creamy soup, go ahead and blend half of it at this point before adding the cheese. Once you add the cheese, you don't really want to blend it. So a creamy soup, definitely blend it. Or if you like it chunky, just leave it as is. Once that's done, we're going to turn off the heat after that broccoli is cooked through. That won't take longer than maybe three or four minutes. Then we're going to add the cheese. But it's important to turn the heat off and make sure that soup cools just a little bit before adding the cheese, otherwise the cheese will curdle. And I do also recommend taking the cheese out of the refrigerator at least 10 minutes before adding it to the soup to try to avoid curdling. If you have cheddar, use that also, it's so good. Now this next one is a bonus recipe. It's just a little cheesy noodles I made for lunch with the remaining ingredients we had on hand. I just added some butter to a large pan, then added some garlic powder, sauteed that on up, until it was nice and toasty, then added some milk and just stirred that in so it was nice and blended and combined. And once that was heated a little bit, then I added some yogurt to this, gave that a good stir, heated it, and then in a separate pot, I cooked some egg noodles, just the rest that we had on hand, and then added that once the sauce was all nice and heated through. This is just similar to a fettuccine alfredo, so you could blend the sauce if you wanted to make it more creamy, but I don't mind all of that Parmesan cheese in there. It just tastes absolutely delicious. Delicious. My kids loved it. This is only about two servings or one adult and two kids. So it's just kind of a bonus recipe to make something with the rest of those ingredients. I hope you enjoyed the recipes. If you try anything, please let me know down in the comments what you think. And please give me a little thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to see more. I'll have a whole lot more of these in the future. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you soon.